that you can read there and see. So we come to that time where we reflect, we join together, and we worship together. Let's do just that.
dedicate these gifts to further your realm with joy and with patience. May these offerings bring hope and peace and transformation, reflecting your love for all your people. Help us to be stewards of your grace and love in the world. In Christ's name we pray.
mostly, well, it's been ignored. And there's a lot of evidence of that. How many people put these verses to memory? And have you ever seen any of these verses posted on a billboard on the interstate? And how many sermons do you remember that have been from the book of James? Martin Luther called this book the Epistle of Straw. Now, we're not quite sure what Martin Luther was thinking when he made those remarks. People have argued over why he said them. Truth be told, if, if we were all honest, most of us would not prefer to hear James as a preacher. We probably wouldn't like his style. And my guess is it was because he was... Uh, well, he wasn't lukewarm. He was very passionate about some things that he felt was uh, very important. He uses over a hundred imperatives in this short little book. A hundred imperatives. Now, if James would have been a teacher, it's pretty clear that he wouldn't have had any multiple choice questions on his exam. He, he, he's not given options for this thing about how you live out this thing called faith. He's pretty clear. James gives us more than a clue as to why he's so passionate. He's pointing to God. He keeps pointing to God. And he says, God, this great creator of the universe, made it all happen with spoken, with the spoken word. Just with a word. God created everything. to be the most dangerous threat 
somebody say Christians? Yes. Her fellow brothers and sisters wrote her hate mail. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, they wrote her hate mail. And you won't believe what some people said. They said she was an abomination. She was a disgrace. They said she wasn't even a Christian. And she said she read them all. And she became discouraged. she was just she was just being honest about her struggle with faith and religion and this thing called love she was just honest and people told her she was bound for hell and she said finally her husband said to her as he noticed how discouraged and depressed she was becoming. He said to her one day, Rachel, remember, tough hide, tender heart, tough hide, tender heart. Because
have found the nerve to 
Yes, even in the home she was serving, she was disrespected. They was common. And that's the point of the movie. That was common. We don't like that about our history. We'd like to forget that about our history. But it's still history. And one of the most powerful scenes that I believe that ever hit the modern screen. It's hard to watch that movie and not be moved to tears. Because in that precious scene, Abilene, who had been treated with such disrespect, has that precious little girl sitting in her lap, and she is spending precious time with that child who has mainly been neglected by her family. And in that scene, she is whispering words, a litany, if you will, that little girl curly hair and all sitting in her lap saying to her you is kind you is smart you is important but you know if you watch that movie carefully you may notice that that's also the litany She uses her ways and her words to Abilene. In a culture of great division and racism, the little girl is using her ways and her words to say to a black maid, Abilene, you is kind. You is smart. You is because you see the little girl looks through a different lens not like the culture but through the eyes of love James says that there is a word planted in you and me that word is planted in all of us Maya Angelou once said I've learned that people will forget what 
ever thank you for those people who used words so carefully, so loving. 